Hi everyone, Ksenia Pros here. Welcome back to my channel. I got a lot of requests from you to do a video Photoshop tutorial on how I extend backdrop in my studio photo shoots. Uh, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it step by step for my studio work as well as outdoor shoots. Most of the time it's a combination of different tools. I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. For example, a lot of you have seen this picture in my maternity photography videos. So this is actually before and after with the backdrop extension. And let's see what exactly I do to extend my backdrops step by step on one of the similar pictures from the same session. So this picture is not as complicated. This is the easy level if you want to practice. It's a solid color background. It's lit pretty evenly. It's surrounding her, meaning she's not out of the background in any way. So we're going to start with the easy level and go to the more complicated scenarios. So one of the easiest way to extend background is just to stretch it. It doesn't have to be a studio background. It could be just like a blurred background outside that looks sort of plain. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab the rectangular selection tool. We will create a selection above the model, which includes most of the background and make sure it doesn't touch the model or any elements in the picture that you don't want to distort. And we're going to press Command T or Control T for PC users that I'm holding Shift key and I'm just extending the background and boom. I could have used the crop tool and crop into the picture, but I don't want to lose the frame because the way I shoot, I crop in camera and frame in camera. I don't want to change the way I frame the picture. Instead, I'm stretching part of the image to keep the crop and just extend the background. But you have to be careful because when you stretch it, you will see that some of the pixels, if there's grain or if there's something, some actually objects in the background, you will see they're going to get distorted and stretched. Sometimes it's okay until a certain point, so you have to be careful and always monitor how it looks. Just to make it a little bit smoother, we're actually going to use the patch tool and just smooth out the light on the backdrop. So when you have grain in the pictures and you're using the patch tool, the grain starts looking uneven. So instead of that, sometimes clone tool would be better. And I use it on low opacity just to sort of mix the tones together. And now let's work with the right hand side because this is not as complicated. So we can try to stretch it out a little bit, but just because there is not so much background on the right hand side of her, if we stretch all of it the same way, see how it looks weird because you can actually see the pixel stretching and the grain stretching. So instead we will stretch it just a little bit and then we'll use a fill tool to fill the rest of the frame. So let me again create a selection without touching the model. I'm going to click Command T or Control T, hold shift and stretch it just a little bit. And then the rest of it, let's create, uh, we're going to grab a lasso tool and we're going to select the part of the image that we want to fill. The tool that I'm going to use is called Content Aware Fill, which means it's going to fill the part of the image of the selection that I just picked using Content Aware technology, meaning the Photoshop is going to analyze pixels are surrounding the selected area and try to match that. So this tool works the best with plain color backgrounds. Or for example, if you shoot against the blue sky, this is a plain color background as well. It works pretty well even with outdoor shoots with different textures in the background. Just make sure you don't have that many complicated objects in the background. We will right click within the selection and click fill from the drop down menu. And make sure it's set on content aware. Click OK and see what happens. Ta-da, magic. Most of the time it works pretty well. With gradients, you have to be careful because sometimes it doesn't match it exactly. So we would have to clean it up to blend it in. Sometimes what works for me, I can create another selection, just a smaller area, and try to do content aware fill one more time. Sometimes it works. Yes, okay, perfect. That looks so much better already. And again, there's no exact science. You have to try different combinations and see what works for your particular picture. Now again, to clean those little imperfections, we can always use patch tool. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna save the work. 
So the right hand side and the top part already look good. With the left hand side, it's all the same thing. It's just a little bit more complicated because we have a person to remove from the picture and she's actually blocking part of the dress, which I probably wanna keep in the picture. So let's see how that's gonna work. So first of all, we're gonna create the selection and we're gonna stretch it out just to get rid of most of the image that we don't wanna see in the shot. So I'm intentionally creating the selection, including the fabric, because I wanna make the fabric look bigger. So I don't mind it being stretched out. That's actually what I do a lot for my photo shoots. So I'm gonna click Command T, hold Shift, and we're gonna stretch it. Again, don't do too much, that's gonna be obvious. And the larger part of image you select, the more stretch you can get away with. So for example, if you select just a small area and try to stretch it this much, it's already obvious. If you do the same amount of stretch with a bigger area, it's not gonna be visible. So let's go back to this side. I'm just gonna create a free selection and see if it's gonna work. Uh, right click inside the selection, fill, content to wear. We just have to clean up and blend in this new selection. And then if you want to extend and shape the fabric in this picture, for example, what I would do, I would create a new layer, go to Filter, Liquify. And with a large brush, I would literally shape the fabric. Just again, be mindful of the background so you don't distort the backdrop too much because it may show, especially with, if you have some shadows in the background. There we go. If you want to see before and after with the fabric stretch, and I did some minor liquify work on the model. And then if you want to see before and after. So that wasn't too hard, right? So make sure to repeat all the steps that I just did and try to practice it and you're gonna nail it. So let's see a more complicated scenario. For example, this picture that I showed you earlier, you see it's out of the background because I use the wide angle lens to take this shot. And when you shoot with a wide angle lens, it stretches out the room. So the backdrop behind her actually becomes smaller. So it's not enough to cover the whole area. And on top of that, the dress is already big so it's hard to contain it within the background but then i always know that i can extend it in photoshop it's not super easy but we can get it done so let me turn off the picture in the background so it doesn't interfere with us so in this case what i would actually start with is just to create the background around those parts that are out of the backdrop just so we have that plain color cross for that let me create a selection i'm going to use the quick selection tool and I will create a selection with the fabric because the fabric is solid color and there is a good contrast with the background. It's very easy to create this selection. Okay, all I need to see is just a clean selection right over here around the edges. Now we're gonna right click, select and mask. We're gonna feather it a little bit because it's not exactly sharp. So we need to create a little bit of the feather. Click OK. And then we will invert the selection. We're gonna click Command Shift E. So now we have selected everything but this area, the dress. And with the clone tool at 100%, we're gonna go click the background closest to the piece that we're working with. I'm holding Alt Option key, clicking here to pick the source and then moving it closer here. So you just need to cover enough area. It doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough because we can use a patch tool to smooth it out. And let's do the same thing with another side. Pick the color closest to the area we're working with. If you see a gradient on the backdrop, make sure you keep it. For example, we see gradient. Um, it's like a line here where the backdrop is bending. So I wanna make sure I'm keeping that straight line. Okay, this is the annoying part, especially if you don't have that big of an area to clone from, it gets pretty tricky, but once you pass this point, it's gonna get easier. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just so we have the color, the right color of the background around the areas where we're missing the backdrop. Click Command D to remove the selection. 
Now, before we start cloning further out, let's clean out those areas so we can use them as a source. So I'm going to use patch tool just to smooth it out. So now let's start with the same way. We're going to extend the sides first and then fill the rest of the frame. So let's create a rectangular selection. Okay, we stretched it. Let's do the same thing for the other side. Again, I don't want to select her hand or her arm. And we can also stretch the top of the frame. And we can give her a little bit more of height. Now let's add the top and the bottom parts. So we're gonna select right around here, click fill. And let's do the same thing with the bottom. And we're gonna create the selection right around here. Around and again, same thing, fill, content aware, and wait for the magic to happen. Okay, this is pretty much it. Um, now you just need to clean up the texture of the backdrop and just even out the tones, but it already looks pretty good. So keep doing this until you're happy with the picture. Okay, let's move on. And let's move on to a more complicated picture. So in this picture, we have two different colors, a lot of seams going on in the background, some of the tape showing, so we have to clean it all up. But pretty much we're using the same tools, the same techniques. It's just knowing what's gonna work in a certain situation. And sometimes it's just try and error. She looks pretty short in this picture. She looks shorter than she is. So we have to extend the frame down. So now we're not only gonna be extending the backdrop, we're gonna be expanding the frame itself, the canvas. So with a simple crop tool, if you grab it, you can keep the same, the original ratio. And we're going to hold shift key to keep it locked. And I'm going to drag the picture down. So what I need for this particular image is to create some extra space in the bottom. And because I'm stretching the picture down uh, to keep the same dimensions, the same ratio, it's going to be also stretched to the side. And then you can control how much on each side you're going to extend your frame. So I think for this particular shot, I'm going to expand it to the left hand side just because I want to keep that composition um, that's the rule of thirds so there is more negative space on the left hand side and there's actually more backdrop on this side too so it's going to be easier for us to clone it and to expand it so make sure you select all of the length of the leg without touching her upper body I'm going to click common T shift and maybe right around here if you do too much it's going to be obvious especially shoes gonna be distorted and then the bottom of the frame you can select and use content to wear fill to just extend the bottom okay let's clean up this part right away and sometimes for seams I like using spot healing brush just pick the right size and now we just need to blend it with a patch tool Okay, now let's fill this part inside because the yellow backdrop was right around here and you can actually see the wall behind it through the opening. I didn't notice this when I was shooting, so now we have to fix it, unfortunately. So we're gonna use a quick selection tool. And we're gonna pick the clone stamp tool and pick the color closest to the area we're working with. Fill it in with the right color. And make sure you're not cloning things that you don't want to. Now we're going to deselect, come on D, blend it in and smooth it out with the patch tool. Before extending the background, make sure you clean it first. If you're going to try to extend this part now, it's going to copy the same imperfections that you have on your background. And it's going to be double the trouble for you because not only you're going to have to clean the original background, but you're going to have to clean the extended version of it. And we're gonna blend in this shadow line from the light. Sometimes you can just paint over your backdrop. I'm gonna create the selection. Let me pick the brush on low opacity. I'm gonna pick like mid-tone from this part and paint over with a big soft brush just to blend in the highlight and the shadow. And sometimes I would pick the color from a completely separate section that I wanna introduce into this part just to keep the color consistent all across. Okay, now let's extend it on the right hand side. We're gonna try to stretch it first and see how far we can get away with it. 
Okay, now let's try to use the fill and see what happens. Unfortunately, I don't think we can keep this part. Now extend the left hand side. Again, same thing. Let me clean the backdrop first before I'm trying to extend it. And it's gonna be different. It's gonna be more complicated on this side because we have two colors. Ta-da! So let's spend a few more minutes cleaning it up a little bit better. But the important thing now you know the tools and the combination of tools you can use to expand and clean the background. In this image, I'm gonna show you quickly how I extend my studio. So I'm not gonna do much. I'm gonna show you how I make my studio look taller and bigger. So I'm gonna select the top part of the image, including part of the windows. I'm gonna click Common T and stretch it out. And if I bring the windows out of the frame, the room looks so much taller. Now it looks like they're in a gigantic, amazing studio. And lastly, let's see how to extend the background and the frame in the outdoor pictures. So this is a little bit more tricky because you have to watch what's in the background. So the background has to be sort of plain for this to work properly. So the reason why you want to extend the frame, first of all, if you want to change the composition of the shot, second of all, I use it a lot for my Instagram pictures because Instagram is square and a lot of vertical pictures, I tend to crop too tight to my models in camera because when you shoot vertically, then you have to crop a good chunk of the image to make it square. So later in Photoshop, some of the pictures have to be extended for them to work for the square crop of Instagram without cropping out the head or the feet of the model. So for example, this picture, if we put it in a square frame, it works fine, but then we don't see the cherry blossoms. So I wanna keep a similar composition. I don't mind cropping um, a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom of the image, but I wanna keep the um, couple and a little bit of the cherry blossom. So with a crop tool, it's very easy to check uh, how the square picture is gonna look like. I'm just gonna extend it until I like how it's gonna look on Instagram. Here would be amazing, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to fill that much space. Okay, let's try. And in the selection tool settings, I'm gonna clear the ratio and I'm just gonna go back and move the top and bottom. So now we know that in order for the picture to work for the square crop of Instagram, we need to fill that much space on each side of the picture. And I selected the, to fill more space on the left hand side, just because there is more plain space around it. There's just water and something in the background, like a bridge in the background. So first of all, we're gonna start with stretch. And we can't do this because that's gonna be too obvious, but we can do maybe right around here. That looks okay. And let's try to fill the rest of the image. Sometimes the fill tool messes up the architecture, the lines, so you just have to go back and either with clone stamp or sometimes I use healing brush because it's very blurred in the background, so you don't know exactly how it's supposed to look. So it's sort of okay if it looks messed up. Okay, that's actually not too bad because the tricky part here, because we have leading lines here, and with a perspective, when you stretch the image, that gets lost, so you have to be careful. And when you use the fill tool, that could be distorted as well. So make sure the picture still looks realistic. So for the outdoor pictures, sometimes spot healing brush works better than the patch tool. The patch tool is good for solid color backdrops and even backgrounds. But for some objects in a distance, uh, for some reason, spot healing brush works a little bit better. Another smaller selection here, and we're gonna get fill. Okay, that's much better. See, and you never know what's gonna work, so you have to try different things and see what works for the particular picture. Now, when Instagram crops the picture, it looks pretty, and I still kept my composition. Okay, that's it. The rest of it is just using the same tools and techniques over and over again until you get the desirable results. Hopefully it was easy enough for you to understand and follow along. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. I'll try to reply to your comments. And if you enjoyed this video and learned something new today, make sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell button. It was Ksenia Pro. See you guys in the next one. Bye.